So Donald Trump, uh, as all of you know at this late date, he has a bunch of loser fail sons. One of them strikes me as significantly dumber than the others, though. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. Um, and the, the doofy one, the one who uh, clearly has the IQ of a ferret, he decided to text a detailed plan on how to overturn the 2020 election to Kevin McCarthy. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. It is in The Guardian. Two days after the 2020 election, Donald Trump Jr. texted the White House chief of staff, oh, excuse me, it was Mark Meadows, with strategies for overturning the results, CNN reported, quote, this is what we need to do. Please read it and please get it to everyone that needs to see it because I'm not sure what we're doing. Trump Jr. reportedly wrote, adding, it's very simple. We have multiple paths. We control them all. One leading legal authority called the text a smoking rifle. CNN said the text was sent on November 5th, 2020, two days before Joe Biden was declared the winner of the election and the next president. Two months after November 5th, on January 6th, 2021, supporters uh, Trump told to fight like hell in his cause, attack the U.S. Capitol. A bipartisan Senate report connected seven deaths to the riot. So uh, it, they continue to say, according to CNN, in his text to Meadows, Trump Jr. laid out strategies the Trump team went on to pursue as they disseminated lies about election fraud and pressured state and federal officials. Such tactics included lawsuits in swing states, the overwhelming majority of which were rejected, and having a handful of Republican state houses put forward slates of fake Trump electors. CNN also said Trump Jr. suggested that if such measures didn't work, lawmakers in Congress could dismiss the electoral results and vote to keep Trump in office. In the immediate aftermath of the Capitol riot, 147 Republicans in Congress voted to object to results in key swing states. Wow. Okay. So just to be clear, this was well before, um, you know, January 6th. And this was when Biden still hadn't been declared the winner. But at that time, the tides were turning and you were getting, you know, the, the rumblings of the conspiracy starting already about, well, hold on, Trump was leading all night on election night. And then how the hell did Biden end up coming back to win the next day? But again, for anybody who followed this stuff closely and bothered to educate themselves in all the details, you would have known. And go back and look at what I said when I was on uh, Rogan's election special. I was warning everybody. There's this red mirage scenario, which is very likely because the votes that come in on election day get counted first. And so it's going to look like the Republicans are doing better than they are because it's a well-known fact historically that Republicans like to vote more on election day. And so that was biased in favor of the Republicans. But then when the mail-in votes are counted, they're historically very biased in favor of Democrats. People who, you know, do the mail-in votes for whatever reason, they're more inclined to vote, to vote Democratic. So this is just standard demographic analysis stuff. It's the same reason that when rural votes come in, you know, they they usually are more buys favor of Republicans. When the city comes in, that's more buys favor of Democrats. So if you count the votes in a certain way, it's going to give off an impression, which is not the end result. And so I warned in advance, I was talking about it during the election, like just so everybody knows, it's going to look like Trump's doing a lot better than he actually is. And then as more votes come in, Biden's going to be the one who takes the lead. So as those tides were turning, as the result was shifting, homeboy immediately starts talking to other Republicans, other, you know, official high level Republicans are like, okay, so what are our options if this thing doesn't go our way? What are our options to try to flip it? What are our options to just take it? Well, look, we have uh, our hands on the levers of power. So here's the potential options we can use. And they're floating this stuff as if it's, you know, as if it's casual, as if it's nonchalant. And I will say, originally I was skeptical of the January 6th commission because it seems like almost just like a waste of time, just a way for Democrats to like, get their message out there without substantively addressing policy that improves lives. Uh, so it's sort of like a theatrical virtue signal about how we're better than the Republicans. So, and in some ways, I still believe that that's effectively what they're doing, what they're doing with the January 6th commission. But on the other hand, there has been a number of things that have come out, which are genuinely terrifying and people have a right to know. Like, for example, there were a number of different memos in the White House being floated casually talking about here are our, here are the ways that we can keep Trump in power, even though he lost after he actually lost. There were memos talking about that. And it, one of the suggestions was like, just declare martial law. Declare martial law and seize the voting machines. How are you just casually openly talking about this? We know that Ted Cruz had agreed, I will argue in front of the Supreme Court, that the election was rigged and that Trump should stay in office. Ted Cruz agreed to that. He agreed to it. Now, the fact of the matter is, as all of you know, it never got that far. Why didn't it get that far? Because the case was preposterous. 
Understand something, guys. There were over 60 court cases. So it's not like, you know, the grievances weren't heard. Of course they were heard. They were heard over and over, and they were smacked down at every single turn. I think Trump only won like one or two of 60 plus cases. And in the cases he won, nothing hinged on it. It didn't flip the results in any particular state. Now, not only, now this is where, you know, some of the hardcore MAGA types would say, yeah, but the courts are rigged and they're all run by Democrats. Nonsense. There were Republican judges that laughed Trump's case out of court. But it gets even deeper than that. There were Trump-appointed judges that laughed Trump's case out of court. They lost over and over and over. They did a whole audit in Arizona. And the audit found not only did Biden win Arizona, he won by more than we thought he won by on election night. So you had your day in court. Everything was heard out. And, you know, basically you have in Trump Jr. and and the rest of these ghouls, we have are people who who create their political opinions based on like reading Facebook memes made up by some douchebag in their basement. And this was the open talk that was going on, man. Look, far be it from me to ever give Mike Pence credit for anything. (laughs) But the fact of the matter is, and we now know this because of detailed reporting after the fact, he was under a lot of pressure from Trump and everybody else. When all else had failed, they said, look, when they go to certify the election, Mike Pence, you could reject the certification. You can reject it. And so there was a lot of pressure put on him, like, reject it. Go out there and make a big stink of it, make a big show of it, say, I reject certifying this election because Donald Trump won. And Mike Pence not only stood up and did the right thing under immense pressure to do the wrong thing, but he also was in contact with a bunch of conservative legal experts who hadn't completely and utterly lost their minds. And they were like, of course you don't have the authority to do this. No, the This is like a symbolic part of the process. We already know what the results are. We know Biden won. This is like a symbolic thing. You can't, we're going to stand up and cause a constitutional crisis when there's less than no case on Trump's side. And so that's what led to the ultimate split up between Trump and Pence. And now Trump thinks Pence is a cuck and, you know, whatever. He sold out to the deep state. Now, if Trump runs again, which looks likely, he's not even going to have Pence as his running mate. But now, you know, this is what was going on behind the scenes. These absolute losers and clowns we're coming up with all these plans. Here's how we can remain in power, even though we just lost. So it was like just openly flirting with the idea of a coup. And I am no fan of Joe Biden. I'm one of the harshest critics of Joe Biden from his left. But the stuff they were talking about was mental. This is mental. And of course, his fail son, like at least some of the other figures involved, they're, uh, They're intelligent enough to sort of cloak what they're saying and hide it behind a veneer of respectability or use unofficial channels to communicate. Trump Jr. is just, he's just a moron. He's just like, how can we steal it if it doesn't go our way? Let's talk about that. And I remember there was an article, I think it was in Axios, where they described a meeting that was going on when Trump had, you know, learned that he lost. There was a meeting going on and um, there was basically a heated argument in the White House. It was a, article that was, you know, riveting in many ways, where you had like the Lynn Woods and the Sidney Powells who are just absolute lunatics. They literally think like Venezuela hacked into our voting machines to get, keep Biden president. (laughs) What? Those people were arguing and Mike, Michael Flynn, they were arguing with some other people who were on Trump's legal team, whose names escaped me at the moment. They weren't big names. They weren't very public names. But every single time the Lynn Woods and the Sidney Powells and the Mike Flynn's would raise some preposterous objection, they would have to be slapped down aggressively by these other lawyers who were like, do you even understand what you're saying and what you're asking for? And that the claims you're making, there's no evidence of it. And we haven't won a single fucking court case. And you're still saying we should try to steal the election and keep him in power. Like, what is wrong with you? What has happened to you? And that's how close we were, man. The whole point of talking about this story is that's how close we were to somebody actually trying to stay in power when they lost the election. I mean, come on, man. It's, it's astonishing and it's terrifying, but leave it up to one of Trump's fail sons to talk about it in the least sophisticated, <laughs> dumbest way possible where he gets caught. At the end of the day, though, I don't know if there will be any, you know, official, um, official punishment or indictments or, or, you know, whatever, jail time for any of this stuff. Because if there's one thing I know for sure is that American elites can escape responsibility come hell or high water. It's happened time and time and time and time again. So I don't really expect much to come of this practically and in terms of criminal justice, but 
at least all the facts need to be out there so we know what went on. And you just, pff, at this point, you just got to hope because Trump's going to run again and he's one of the favorites. Just got to hope he doesn't get into power again because this stuff is, I, I hate like the weird hyperbolic over the top rhetoric of like, our democracy is in danger, yes. But like on some real shit, it sort of was. It sort of was. Not to say that it's a functioning democracy in the first place because at this point, we're kind of an oligarchy with how it works and all the corruption and all the politicians bought off, et cetera, et cetera. But this would have been a level above and beyond when they're floating a coup and they were like a pubes hair length away from actually doing it. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.